So thanks for joining us this morning Ian, uh, really good of you to spend the time to, to put this together. Uh, you might have come across this story just on YouTube, you might have come across it some other way, a friend of Ian, a family member. Uh, this is a great story, well worth a watch and just worth a few minutes of your time to, to hear Ian's story. So let's get started. Okay. So Ian, tell us a little bit about yourself, tell us a little bit about your family, about how you find yourself these days. Yeah, well now I've retired, I've got all the time to do the things that I, that I enjoy and uh, family is really important to me. The, the Rowena and my wife we will, will have been married next year 40, 40 years. Uh, thank you. Uh, three children. Uh, the, the, the eldest, Chris is 37, uh, daughter uh, Sarah, she is married with three boys, uh, Josh who is six, Jacob four and the little Oliver who's eight months and spend a lot of time with them which is brilliant and then Richard our youngest lad he's married with a little boy of two years old. Uh, don't get to see him quite as much. I think it's normally mums and daughters. Um, but yeah, we spend a lot of time together. We eat out with each other. We'd go on holiday together. Uh, it's brilliant. Yeah, we feel it's. I say it's a big, big part of my life. So it's great. That's yeah. great. So life's good. That's what it is. To be honest, yeah, life. Yeah, I have to say it is. It is good. Even with the lockdown, we found other things to do walk, spend time with each other. In fact, it's calmed us all down a bit, I think. So try and d d look at the d positives. Well, that's great. So life hasn't always been as good as it is now? Uh, well, I'd split up uh, from Rowena due to the, my alcohol problems, which began uh, really uh, the, when I was away at school. Uh, from a young lad I'd had a bad stammer, which is still here uh, from time to time. And uh, when I was at, at school, uh, my speech was really bad and I was badly teased there. And when I left and became a student, uh, again, stammer was bad there. I didn't feel I fitted in, so I began using alcohol to give me confidence. Uh, unfortunately, it, that became worse because I needed more and more to give me the confidence I hadn't hadn't got and uh, and so all through my life it continued like that uh, then I met my wife uh, 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 Rowena and we went and lived in Zambia which is a very boozy boozy culture there which I thought was brilliant uh, but obviously not for us or me really and um, came back to this country after a year and a half and it got that bad, I was taking alcohol into my office in a briefcase. So just to give people an idea of how much you're drinking, just tell us a little bit about that. Uh, yeah, my daily consumption was, uh, was eight cans of special brew, four or five cans of diamond white cider, four or five pints of Budweiser, uh, half to a bottle of brandy and 30, 40 uh, cigarettes a day. That, that, was, that, was, that was my daily consumption, not, not weekly. So not, to, not, not just the expense of that, just, the, just that amount of alcohol is going to have a huge impact on your life. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, it spoilt our life with the children. I, I wasn't involved in their upbringing really at all. And Rowena had to do all that. Uh, yeah, it, it, of course, it just, it just caused massive problems and I just couldn't get off it. I kept, in fact, if I go up in the loft now, I could find old diaries when I'm writing, this is my last day, last day. So you have a big blowout and then the next day you come back and do it again. And it, it eventually reached the stage that I was that ill in the morning uh, that I had to have a special brew and a good amount of brandy just to get out of bed, just to function. And, and by then it was no longer any fun. I, I didn't enjoy it, but I couldn't seem to get off it. So life's pretty tough at that point. You've split up with Rowena and you're living on your own in a mobile home. Yeah, I'm living in a mobile uh, home. Uh, and um, yeah, life is a nightmare really. It's, it's, uh, I still can't 
get off this drink and uh, me and Ray in uh, I said do we are apart I saw the kids occasionally but that wasn't very good they weren't that bothered and on uh, one particular day in December I think 2002 I just thought I can't cope with this I'd had my morning special brewing brandy and I thought right that's it going to find a river jump in that and just to end and end my life i couldn't i couldn't really see any any purpose in living so th at that point things were at the lowest of the low but things are different now yeah a year or two before that uh i went on an alpha course a, a christian course teaching you about jesus and the christianity and i only went on this uh, with the intention of disproving this god I had, had one of these alpha leaflets put through my door and it was this guy who I had uh, spoken to once or twice. Year after year he put this alpha leaflet through my door asking me and I think honestly a lot of others to go on this course. I thought right I'm fed up with you asking me every year so I'll go on your course and you've already said I can ask whatever I like so you'll regret the day I've gone on that course. Uh, so this course, the Alpha course, which was run by Mac, I believe, that was at his house? Yes, it's at his house. There were a, a dozen people uh, and we had a meal, which was great. And then there was a, a DVD. I think the guy was uh, Nicky Gumble, And his talks were, they were very interesting. Then we'd debate them. And I found it was very interesting. And at the end of the course, the 12 week course, I felt the evidence for Jesus was strong. Uh, and I thought, yeah, there they, 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 they could be something there. Uh, but I didn't do much with it. And it was about a year after that. I, I was still be drinking uh, that, that Rowan had had enough, I'd had enough. And so we split up for about the fifth time. And then I found this mobile uh, home and uh, and went down to live there. So that's really poor, uh, you, you go on this alpha course and you're thinking about finishing it in a river? Yeah, I just thought I, 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 I can't cope with this and so I went out looking for a river, although I've later found that there are a few around, around me uh, and I remember this alpha course and this god and I just in despair, I yelled to this God I didn't particularly believe in and said, look, if you exist, matey, deal with these addictions or stick it or words to that effect. Uh, I didn't find the river, came back to the mobile home, uh, went to bed then woke up, went back to bed again, eventually got to bed for the night and I woke up in the morning and went for my normal special brew and brandy both tasted really off. I thought I got a bad batch. Then I had a cigarette or I, I, I lit a cigarette. I couldn't really breathe. So I rested most of the rest of the day, not feeling well. Next day did the same again. And then, then all of a sudden I, I started thinking, this is really strange, this, this, this special brewing brandy, that can't be all bad and do the cigarettes. Uh, I, I thought this is, this is, this is most odd can't be this god I yelled to. So this takes us to the beginning of 2003 and I um, think well if this is this god okay here's a test for him. I said how about putting me and Rowena back together which I didn't want at all and uh, she definitely didn't and I, I remember at the time I said look if if that happens, then that'll be a miracle too. Then, then whatever you want me to do in the future, or I'll just become one of your followers, not thinking anything would happen. Uh, but we did get back with each other. We renewed our marriage vows. Uh, I think it was in 2003 or four. I can't honestly can't remember. Probably 2004. And uh, from then. Did, did my life just decided to change. I have never touched a drink or a cigarette uh, since that day. Yeah. I've never had the urge, desire, and that'll be this this December will be 18 years. Yeah. So, and, and that's the amazing thing is that I just don't have an urge or a desire. There's no, it 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 just doesn't interest me. So that's great. It's really good. Would you say that you've been on a faith journey? 
Yeah, uh, after all that had happened, I then started going along to a, a church. Uh, I started reading the Bible, not every day, bits and bobs occasionally. I, uh, so yeah, it was, it was a long journey, it's a, it's a journey I went on. I didn't jump into everything thinking, right, yes, this is it, I'm a, I'm a Christian. I'm, it, it, was, it, it was a journey and things would happen and then I'd go down this way and yeah, and I think over these 18 d d years, uh, my faith has grown and grown. And of course there's ups and downs still, uh, but it's, it's, been a, it's been a journey when I think, even, even these days now, I think I can't believe how my life's changed and how blessed I feel. I'm, I'm just, it's, it's just, it stuns me to be honest, it still does, even after 18 years and you know, as long as I live, I'm still, still, it'll still amaze me. That's great Ian, that's really good. So somebody's watching this, they find themselves in a similar situation, you know, life's really tough. Maybe they're struggling with substance abuse, alcohol, mental health, you know, all that kind of thing. They're even separated. What would you say to them? Uh, there's lots of places to go to AA. Uh, there's, there's others which I, I wouldn't know about. I, all that happened for me, there was the Lord. But I would suggest speak to someone who's a... Christian, it, there's different churches, denominations, I, I don't think it matters where you go, just just maybe go along, talk to people, just, just talk to people, they might be able to steer you in the right direction. I mean, I think one thing that's important, I'd never push a person to come along to a church, come along, do this, that you, you've, you've got to be, you've got to want to, you have to want to, and, and if you don't want to, not at that, at that stage, then perhaps, perhaps you don't and that might not be the right thing to say uh, but you you just got to go with what, what what you feel is really is really yet yeah, right and it's not easy making that first step uh, definitely i'd been i'd been attempting to do it for years and years and years in fact i've tried to do it since i've been about 18 and that took me till 46 years so you know it's a long time and i was lucky i was still there but uh, yeah talk 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 to maybe a christian you know who you who you but trust and just ask for a bit of guidance and, and, and take it from there and actually see what happens. Mm. Well, thanks Ian, that's just really great. Thank you so much for spending the time, for taking the time this morning to put this together. So it might be that you found Ian's story really speaks to you. You relate to some of the things he talked about and like he suggests, you'd like to talk it over with someone. If so, our contact details are on the screen and we'd love to hear from you. Ian talked about being on a journey and I think that the very fact you've watched his story means that you're on a journey. If that's the case, you might like to join me in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.